Hi, I'm Lidia Peraza, a principal in Hydric and Struggles Mexico office with more than 20 years of experience in the consumer market, life sciences, and healthcare sectors. I am excited to speak with Margaret Enriquez, the CEO of Baccarat, a French luxury brand internationally recognized as the leader for high-end exclusive crystal products. Maggie has over 30 years of experience, including over 13 years heading up LVMH Champagne House Group. Maggie has also worked for several multinationals, including Seagram, Navisco, Moet Hennessy Estates and Wines. Notably, she was awarded Chevalier de la Légion d'Honneur on France 2021. She also has served on Baccarat's Board of Directors. Maggie, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Maggie. What leadership skills and experiences have you found to be essential as you have navigated being CEO in the luxury goods industry? When you talk about luxury, one characteristic that is very different to, from the mass market is that a leader in the luxury world has to really go deep in the roots of the house to then go very, very far uh, and fly very, very high. Why? Because a luxury house, to be luxury, you have to be first unique and different. And it was first unique and different when it was founded. So you have to go the look for the reason of being and then project the house into the future, getting again and again this number one or this kind of position that brings the light that enlightens the past for others. So the first characteristic you have to have is you must have is to understand that you have to go into the roots of the house to nourish your strategy, to then define your vision, to uh, go much, much further, and to be able to fly very high. That is an essential characteristic of a leader in the luxury world. On the other side, because you are really bringing from the past to build the future, you have to communicate very well in order to bring everyone with you in the project. So the communication is absolutely essential. And then of course, normally a strong house is a house that is based on a reason of being that doesn't change and values. And so normally to make sure that values are well taken care of and they are lived in every action, you have to be a very strong, determined and very value driven person. Of course, any advice you would give your younger self looking back on your career journey, Maggie? Yes, of course. One of the characteristics that we talk and it's related to luxury is time. Because it's about the emotion you create between the brand and the consumer, this takes time. Because there is no, nothing or no, no link that is created between a brand and a, a, a person that doesn't need time to be built. And so my recommendation to younger generations is that they have grown up uh, learning that everything is instantaneous because in the telephone, everything happens immediately. But the truth is that my recommendation is to understand that time is essential to build great things in life. And time is essential to understand that you have to build with work and patience. Our most recent Route to the Top annual global report, which tracks and analyzes the profiles of CEOs at the largest companies in 25 markets, found slow but steady progress on gender balance in 2022. 13% of new CEO appointments were women, compared to 11% in 2021 and 9% in 2020. And of course, the share of women on executive leadership Teams also remain slow. What needs to be done to advance the e &I efforts within organizations? And how do you personally advance the e &I efforts as CEO? Well, I think it's uh, diversity and inclusion is absolutely critical if you want to win in the long term. An organization needs to have diversity because diversity represents the, the, the consumer and the world we have in front of us. So there is no way a company will succeed if it is not serious in diversity and inclusion. Because uh, the responsibility, the social responsibility of a company 
is absolutely critical and it's something that is going to be seen by the young generation, the talent who is coming in the conference. So I don't see how you can get off this without harming the future development of the conference. So this is the first side. The second is what can we do to uh, really continue to improve these trends? And I want to say, you know, and I know sometimes I am criticized because of this, but I don't care is that the, the, the time women have been in the world of business is quite short. See? And so this was a universe that was completely managed by men. It was their universe for years and years. And so women have been there for what, 80 years probably? You know, it's very little considering the, 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 the time and that the, the people live in the way we know and history has given us the information. So I think we have to be very proud of, the, of what we have done so far. And what is critical is those people who are convinced that this is something to be done because there is no way to succeed without it. We have to make sure that we implement it. So we have to make sure that in any decision in the company, if there is a talent that is a woman or a man, and they are both the same, give some privilege or some priority to the woman, because this is going to help. Not this going to you don't give a priority if she's not better than him, but if they are even, give a priority to diversity and inclusion. And so, bringing this consciousness gradually, I think there is no company that can succeed if they don't go into this trend. Because as I said before, young generations, they really ask companies to be committed to the planet and to be committed to diversity and inclusion. This is to be committed to people. So I think we have to, those of us who believe in this, we have to apply it. We have to try to push hard. And those of uh, who are not, so much convinced, will be convinced if they want to protect their companies for the long term. As a female executive and board member, how have you navigated your career? What advice would you share with women who aspire to be in leadership positions too? Well, I have to say that I have always managed my career, always thinking, well, I never thought that it was a problem to be a woman. Probably this was the first thing. And it happened to me when I arrived in Mexico I was called by a university inviting me to give a conference. I said at the beginning, but what, I have, what is what I'm going to say? But then I said, no, no, yes, you're right. I have the responsibility of sharing my experience. Give me six months and I will prepare something, which I did. And I did this conference for many, many years. And I always very proud to share my own experience and how I have built my career. There's no formulas, but there's something that is critical. And it is about how you believe in you, how you believe in your projects, how you take time to work, to be curious, to learn, to understand that you work in a world of men. So you don't, you cannot come with your way of being and thinking that everybody is going to take care of you. No, you have to understand that men are different. They are simpler. They just focus. Let's try to learn. Let's question ourselves until we can really get to be ourselves, very strong value driven. I mean, never negotiate values, but understanding that we have to adapt that to a universe that is not the universe uh, that is being managed by women. And one recommendation that I think is extremely important because it is very connected to our essence as women is when we work, we are there to be respected, not to be loved. So every decision we make has to be thinking that the decision corresponds to what we have to do to be respected, not to be loved. This can change many, many behaviors and it can be very useful. What were some of the most impactful ways you were mentored and sponsored through your career, Maggie? Yeah, I was very much sponsored, I have to say, 
And uh, the first was when I was quite young and uh, the president of, of uh, Seagram International, Seagram was a very, very big player in the world of wine and spirit. Today is almost equivalent to Bernorica. And uh, my boss, I was very young, I was 32 years old, and my boss thought that I was uh, the, capable to, to manage a, a position of a president, uh, unifying three companies together. And the trust of this man, the confidence and the, and, the, and the opportunity he gave me was absolutely critical for the career that I had been. And then uh, years after, Christophe Navarre was the president of Moetenesi International. When he invited me to join Argentina as the president of all the properties of Moetenesi in Argentina was already something fantastic. Because, well, he didn't know me, but the most interesting and really amazing sponsoring he did was, was when he invited me to run the House of Crook, the House of Champagne. So it was the first time a Latin American ever, man or woman, uh, run a, a House of Champagne. And, and this was thanks to Christophe, who believed in me and gave me the opportunity, and I'm very grateful to him. We are increasingly focused on how critical it is for organizations to have a culture of allyship, one in which employees help to advocate for one another. From your perspective, Maggie, what are, what are some ways that leaders can embrace and drive this culture? Yeah, allyship is networking. And networking is essential for creativity. So I believe that today, because of the connectivity, it is very different to probably 30 years ago that you have to really impulse and provoke this kind of connection. Today, what is critical is to let the connections happen, to understand that organizations are not anymore uh, pyramidal and hierarchical, they are molecular. And so provoke this kind of connection and networking will not only help to, to strengthen the, the kind of allies between uh, people and between organization or divisions of the organization, but it will absolutely help to develop creativity, which is something fundamental for the growth and the, and the, and the development of the company. Maggie, thank you for making the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.